Welcome back for more Reddit story videos. Today we have several I don't work here lady stories for you to enjoy. As always, don't forget to share and like if you enjoy these videos. Without further ado, here we go. Racist because I do not work here. I meet my family at a restaurant I love going to. I'm wearing black dress pants, black shoes and a polo black shirt. I was dressed like this because I was in college core and that was the expectation. The restaurant was rather busy and I am on good terms with some of the staff so I chose to grab a towel from the outside customer side counter after greeting my family and wipe down the table we chose to sit at. My friend acquaintance standing on the service side of the counter sees me and we talk for a short moment and I hand her the towel so she can toss it in the bucket. I start heading back to my family when it happens. CL confused lady F friend M manager M mom me, me. CL. Excuse me. Me, I do not realize she's talking to me. I don't know her and was focused on what I was going to be eating and getting to see my family. Excuse me. Still thinking about food, but due to louder voice, took more notice. Excuse me. Slams hand on table and pulls out phone angrily, walks in front of me. CL. Hey, I was wondering why you are ignoring me. She holds phone in my face and talks really fast about how I ignored her, talked to coworkers instead of doing my job and how I would not help her. Then points at my family. CL. Notice the white customers that arrived after me have been helped by her. She tells me to look at her table and puts the camera on it. She asks angrily, did you wipe down the white family's table after they came in? Me having anxiety attack, unable to speak and crying because I am overstimulated. Yes, I wiped it down, but I get cut off. So you admit you were taking care of that table while ignoring me because of the color of my skin? What? I don't... Cuts me off. CL, I will be sending this video to your owners tomorrow. You chose the wrong person to do this. Me, I'm just crying at this point because I am so freaked out. I don't want to be in her film and I try and hide my face. CL, oh, now you try to hide. Now that I am making you take accountability. I want your name now. Luckily, my friend sees what is going on and walks over with the manager. CL goes off with the video camera in his face about how he needs to fire me for my clear racial discrimination. How she was going to send the video up the chain asking my name and gets more upset when the manager is, who is trying to find his own response stays quiet a moment too long. She screams louder that she wants my name and other angry stuff. The manager is in his 30s and more soft spoken. He lets her talk for what felt like forever. My mom comes up at this point. Mom, hey, uh, you coming back? CL goes off about how entitled my mom was and that other people, even if they are black, deserve the same customer service. My mom understand what was going on right away. With the all black outfit I was wearing, I looked like I worked there. With my need to try and help out by wiping my table, I act like I worked there. How she explained it to me later. My mom looks at the upset lady in the eyes. Starts breathing deeply, eventually magically getting the lady to start to copy her, helping her calm down while the manager start off with the apology of being so busy. She's still filming but not yelling anymore at this point. My mom then said this. Mom, excuse me. This is my daughter. I understand she is dressed similarly to the employees here, but I promise you she is not employed here. I'm sorry you have had a bad experience, but I am going to be taking my daughter back to our table now. CL, if she does not work here, why is she wiping tables down and talking with her co-workers? This is where my friend acquaintance finally cuts in. F. She is a regular and helps out by wiping her own table or buzzing some of her dishes from time to time. I told her it was fine as long as she did not go onto the service side of the counter. CL was clearly embarrassed at this point. She finally put her camera down. My mom wishes her well over her explaining how I should not give the permission of working there. Mom pulls me back to our table with the lady still talking. She ended up leaving after the manager and her finished talking and my friend said he gave her a free dessert to go. I ended up getting free dessert that night as well. I really hope she does not post that video anywhere. I've been looking online daily since this happened. It has really kicked up my anxiety. My mom and I concluded that when you are harassed by society every day because of who you are, it starts to break you inside. 
I get bullied a lot myself when my autism shows. I can try and hide that and get away with hiding it often. She did not hate me. She hates the way she had been treated by others. I just wish it could have gone better. A single digit makes all the difference. For those who remember my previous post, I'm in the military. I have been stationed in quite a few different places around the US and the world. Because of that, I have a cell phone number that is out of the area and use it for just about everything. Between that and occasional work issued phone, I have never felt the need to have a dedicated landline. However, with my most recent residence, the company I get my internet and cable through had a plan set up where every service came individually. Or you could get a bundled box that had cable internet and phone. However, there was no cable internet only option. Since the phone included bundle was cheaper than a la carte, I said hell with it, might as well. I even went ahead and got a cheap phone and plug it in. That was my first mistake. Apparently this phone number was one number different from a local Domino's pizza place. Fortunately, I didn't have the company put my number on the commercial instead of their own problem we often see here, but I did have one person who managed to call me a few times, yes, more than once, instead of calling the pizza place. I can only guess that she has tried to program it into a contact entry and only ever went back to the contact each time rather than dialing it outright. The first time the phone rang, I of course pick it up, curious as to who would be trying to call me on a number I hadn't actually given to anyone. That was my second mistake. The conversation should have been simple, sorry you have the wrong number, oh my bad, click, where it's so easy. Given that I'm here now posting this story, we all know that's not what happened. Call one, me, hello, Karen. That's no way to answer the phone for a restaurant, you should identify yourself and your company when you pick up. Uh, but this isn't a restaurant, this is my home line. Don't lie to me. Now, take my order. It's click. I hung up. Immediately she called back. <laughs> Call two. Hello? Karen. Still with this? What's wrong with you? Me? Oh, really now? She opened the door of ass already. So I'm more than happy to walk through it. Mentally cracking my fat knuckles, I engaged my finer every side. Affecting a heavy twang, I said, Hank's Roadkill Cafe, you kill it, we grow it. This is Hank Jr. speaking, how may I help you? <laughs> Karen, a few seconds of silence. Then, what on earth are you talking about? I just want to order some pizza. Me, that's gonna be a bit of an issue, hun. Seeing as how they ain't no pizzas running across the road for ya to hit. How we gonna grow up that dead pizza when there ain't no such thing? Karen, this is extremely unprofessional. Let me speak to your manager. Me, Hank, hey Hank, get your ass over here. Then I hung up, thinking what would be the end of it. Surely no one would think that that performance was a valid phone number for a pizza place. That was my third mistake. About five minutes later, she called back, recognizing the number. I get up for every number two. Call free. Me. Alfredo's Pizza Cafe, this is Mike, how may I help you? Karen, wait, I thought this was Domino's. Me, no, this location used to be Domino's, but I was bought by Alfredo. Our prices are a bit more expensive, but what would you rather have? A medium amount of good pizza or all you can eat of pretty good pizza? What can I say, I'm a diehard The Office fan. Karen, I'll tell you what I want to order, stop trying to upsell me on things I don't need. She proceeded to launch into a rather lengthy delivery order with more than a few details, none of which I wrote down as I gave uh-huh uh-huhs and gotchas throughout. Me. Okay, I rung all that up and fortunately for you, we're running a special half off for any order up to 8 pizzas. The total comes down to 63.50. Karen. What? That's so much more expensive than Domino's would charge and that's half off? Yes, madam. The, but it's the best pizza in the city, according to the Scranton Times. Uh, whatever, just get it here ASAP. She yelled her address at me, then hung up without even letting me try to confirm. Two hours later, the number pops up on the phone. I mentally prepared myself for yet another round in the rain with this mental lightweight. Call 4. Me, Alfredo's Pizza Cafe, this is... Karen sounding more like a banshee crossed with a diesel engine as she was clearly a lifelong smoker doing her best to yell, where is my pizza? 
Me. Oh dear, I'm sorry, our delivery driver wasn't able to make it out to you. While he was out on the run delivering another order at another address, he was held hostage by a strange group of people in a small business park who were having an after-hour office party. By the time he was let out and got back to his car, your pizza was cold and he was terribly traumatized, so we gave him the rest of the night off. Also, this, this was never a restaurant number, like I said from the very start. Karen, what do you mean this isn't a restaurant? You said you were and took my order. Me, yeah about that, I lied. I cackled with a fake mania call laughter while I only served to enrage her more. Karen, incomprehensible nonsense punctuated by the word manager at least a couple of times. Me, lady, listen, this isn't a pizza place, it's a home number and I'm done with you. I hung up and disconnected the phone from the box. The cable system would pop up a notice anytime someone called the line if you were watching TV with the number that was calling and I got at least a dozen more calls from her that night. Plus two more the following night after that it stopped. Fast forward two weeks, my wife and I were in the mood for some pizza, so I suggested picking up from that Domino's. In the intervening weeks, I had done some searching online and found a Domino's with the one number difference that was the partial cause of that fun-filled evening. And it seemed like as a good candidate as any to get our dinner for that night, I called the order in as I left work and stopped by to pick it up on my way home. As I was at the register waiting for it to finish in the oven, I recounted the story of what had happened to the cashier. She was floored. The look on her face was priceless. She explained to me that Karen had come into their location like a bat out of hell, looking to cause all sorts of shits, thinking they were the ones who had done this to her. She refused to listen to anyone, explained that they had no idea what she was talking about, not even the manager and eventually had to be removed from the location by cops and was served with a trespass order. Fortunately, I have not received any subsequent calls from Karen. All told, it was a well worth the time I spent on the phone with her. Girl stops me in hospital lobby asking for diagnosis. I will start this story by admitting that I actually am a doctor but was not practicing at this hospital. I had just come off my shift at a hospital on the other side of the city and was stopping in to visit a family member. I was wearing scrubs, no lab coat or name badge, but I understand how I could be confused for someone who works there. I was leaving the hospital and had just gotten to the main lobby where a very hyper girl, about 17, 18 years old, grabbed my arm and stopped me. Hyper girl. Excuse me? Yes? Can you tell me what this is? Hypergirl then proceeds to lift up her shirt, exposing her abdomen, which is covered in a rash. I took a step back because I was caught off guard by the encounter and said, uh, no, are you going to the ER? No, do, do I need to go to the ER? Uh, probably not, I just asked because you were walking that direction. Well, can you at least try and figure out what it is? It's really itchy and there are all of these bumps. Feel it. Uh, no thanks. Why are all the doctors around here so unhelpful? I'm not even a doctor here. Uh, whatever, you're wearing those doctor clothes. Me. Most everyone working in a hospital wears them. If you're grabbing random people from the lobby, chances are you've asked housekeeping or volunteers to diagnose your rash. You need to make an appointment to see someone in the clinic. Hypergirl was starting to get a bit more historical at this point. I don't even know where to go do that. Can't you just prescribe me a cream for it? <laughs> no, I can't. I don't even know what you've got. Truthfully, I didn't. I'm an OB gin. Dermatology is outside my wheelhouse. Hypergo, I guess I'm just going to the ER since you are so unhelpful. Me? Okay, good luck. Seriously, such a weird encounter. So those were the stories for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be highly appreciated. It really does help my channel out. Also, if you enjoy this and want to stay up to date on the latest videos, then don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for listening and I will see you in the next video.